हेलो फ्रेंड्स ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग ओ ओ एस सी ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ऑब्जेक्टोरी इज अ मेथड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड डेवलपमेंट विथ स्पेसिफिक एम टू फीड द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ लार्ज रियल टाइम सिस्टम ओ ओ एस सी इज द फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड डिजाइन मेथडोलॉजी दैट एम्प्लॉयज यूज केसेस इन द सॉफ्टवेयर डिजाइन हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अवर चैनल उल्लास कुमार गोखले फॉर लर्निंग द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग or objectory let us start with the agent first we'll discuss introduction to use case because that is employed in this method then we'll study the basic model elements of use case then we'll study the advanced model elements of use case then we'll take use case examples library and atm and then we'll study the use case description how it should be then we'll study the structure of a use case narrative Now um, this will make you understand how to use the use case. Then we'll study the different diagrams used in the UML, and then we'll study the object-oriented software engineering and different phases. Then we'll go for the software lifecycle activities and models of object-oriented software engineering. That is OOAC. Then we'll just summarize the models of objectory, and lastly we'll Draw a conclusion from this. Let us start with the introduction to use cases. Now, use cases are scenarios for understanding the system requirements. Use cases are used during the requirement elicitation and analysis to represent the functionality of the system. So, in order to understand the functionality of the system, we make use of the use cases. So, this is done during the elicitation and analysis phase of the software development. Then. use cases focus on behavior of the system from an external point of view that is how the external actors they have influence on the system that is focused by the use cases so is case describes a function provided by system that yields a visible result for an actor now who is an actor an actor describes any entity that interacts with the system that is a user or another system or systems physical environment all these are the actors so the identification of actors and use cases result in a definition of boundary of the system that is in differentiating the task accomplished by the system and the task accomplished by its environment so this differentiation is necessary because without that will not be able to fix the boundary of the system so the actors are outside the boundary of the system whereas the use cases they are inside the boundary of the system so this will be clear when we study the different examples and we make use of the use case diagrams to show a subset of model to simplify communication so this is the just brief introduction to use case now let us go to the basic model elements the use case model contains a minimum of the following basic model elements the first is the actor the model element representing each actor so here it will have the actor and the actor will have properties that is name and brief description then the second element is the use case so model element representing each use case we call it as the use case and again it has the properties use case name and use case specification so two properties it is having then the next is associations so associations are used to describe the relationship between actors and the use case they participating so those who are participating in the use case so their association is important so this relationship is commonly known as communicates association then let us go to the advanced model elements the first is the subject a model element that represents the boundary of the system of interest we call it as the subject then use case package so model element used to structure the use case model to simplify analysis communication navigation and planning so it comes under the use case package so if there are many use cases or actors you can use use case package to further structure the use case model in much the same way as you use the folders or directories to structure the information on your hard disk same way you can make use of the 
use case package for structuring the use cases because if the number of actors and use cases they are more then it needs to be structured then next is generalization the relationship between actor to support reuse of common properties that is generalization so we'll go through this then the next is advanced model elements so here first is dependencies a number of dependencies types between the use cases are defined in uml that is unified modeling language in particular we have extend and include so the extend is used to include optional behavior from an extending use case in an extended use case so let us understand this with the example for example you take the use case order pizza now this is a use case now we want to extend this so we make use of the extend and then we take another use case that is order cold drink so here we are having two use cases one is the order pizza and second is order cold drink so order pizza is extended with the help of this extends so in this way we can you make use of the dependence the next is include so include is used to include common behavior from an included use case into a base use case in order to support the reuse of common behavior so here let us take example for example we have use case withdraw cash now this is a use case so here we include validate user so unless and until we validate the user he should not be allowed to withdraw cash so in this way the include will be used then next let us take example of use case here we have the library so library will have the users or members and member is an actor whereas the supplier is another actor and member will have the use cases checking out books getting an interlibrary loan doing research reading books newspapers so these are the use cases for the member whereas for the supplier the use case is purchasing supplies so simple example of library so next we have the example for use case atm so in this case we have the bank customer cashier maintenance person bank these are the actors and withdraw cash transfer funds validate user deposit funds and refill machines these are the use cases so the bank customer can make use of the use case withdraw cash now when doing this we have included validate user so every time he wants to withdraw cash first uh, the user has to be validated then only he can withdraw the cash from the bank similarly if he wants to transfer the funds again uh, we have included this validate user for depositing funds again we have included the validated user so in this way the cashier can deposit funds to the bank even the bank customer can deposit funds in his account so in this way the things will work similarly the maintenance person will refill the machine with the cash so this is how the atm will work then let us go to the use case description so use cases are described as one of the following that is non formal text with no clear flow of events so this is the first thing so we have to avoid this it is a non formal text and there is no clear flow of events in this and second is text easy to read but with a clear flow of events to follow so that is what we have to make use of for making the use cases and then next is formal style using pseudo code so that is also it will uh, not be clear for the clients so we can avoid that then use case description must contain how and when the use case begins and ends so that is nothing but the start and end of the use case so that is important then the interaction between the use case and its actors including when the interaction occurs and what is exchanged so here event will be there say for example if you take the atm machine there you are inserting the card into the machine 
so the card is exchanged between the user and the machine then next is how and when use case will need data stored in the system or will store data in the system so for validating the user it will need the data stored in the system and next is exception to the flow of events so there can be exceptions to the flow of events for example if the pin is wrong so that becomes an exception so that has to be taken care then how and when concept of problem domain are handled so this is what the use case description must contain the next structure of an use case narrative atm so here we are just trying to have the structure of the use case atm so here the basic flow will be insert card validate card select cash withdrawal then select account confirm availability of funds return card dispense cash so these are the different events and flow basic flow and can be exceptions whatever we have said now the alternative flow the first is invalid card if the card is invalid then non standard amount if you are putting the amount which is a not multiple of 100 then it will be non standard amount then receipt required so that will be you will be asked whether you need the receipt or not insufficient funds in atm insufficient funds in account would cause overdraft then card stuck cash left behind so these are some of the alternative flows so we have to consider all the things when we are designing the use cases then let us go to the next that is uml diagram so unified modeling language makes use of these diagrams for representing different things the first is the use case diagram so they represent the functionality of the system from the user's point of view so they define the boundaries of the system just now we have discussed this then next we have the class diagrams they represent the static structure of the system in terms of objects their attributes operations and relationship so that will be shown in the class diagram then next we have the interaction diagram so it represents systems behavior in terms of interactions among the set of objects they are used to identify objects in the application and implementation domain so we have to identify these objects say in the application as well as in the implementation domain we'll come to this when we study the actual implementation then next is state machine diagram so represent behavior of the non trivial objects then last is activity diagram they are nothing but the flow diagrams used to represent the data flow or the control then let us go to the next that is object oriented software engineering so object oriented software engineering oos is also called as the objectory is a method of object oriented development with the specific aim to fit the development of large real time systems so for the large real time system this method is used oos is developed by ivar jacobson in 1992 and is the first object oriented design methodology that employs use cases in the software design so this is nothing but use case driven development so the development process which stresses that use cases are involved in several phases of the development including the requirements elicitation then analysis design implementation and testing so it will use the use cases for the these different phases and try to implement the system so let us come to the requirement elicitation so during requirements elicitation the client and the developers define the purpose of the system so the result of this activity is a description of the system in terms of actors and use case so what is elicitation first let us understand this elicitation is nothing but to draw the requirements or if you want to know it in hindi requirements nikalna so when we are going for this we have to have the description of the system in terms of actors and use cases so that we can draw the requirements of the system 
so actors represent the external entities that interact with the system and they include roles such as end user other computers or systems need to deal with that is a for example a central bank computer or we call it as the server machine or a network and even the environment for example if there is a chemical process so that is the environment in which it has to work so that will also be an actor so actor will have different roles then use cases are a general sequence of events that describe all the possible actions between actor and the system for a given piece of functionality so we are considering the use cases as per the functionality then next is analysis so during analysis the developers aim to produce a model of the system that is correct complete consistent and unambiguous so here we are having three c's correct complete and consistent and there should be no ambiguity that is very important then developers transform the use case produced during requirement elicitation into an object model that completely describe the system so here the use case will be transferred into a object model we call it as the uh, application domain objects during this activity the developers discover ambiguities and inconsistencies in the use case model that they resolve with the client so here we'll have discussion with the client to resolve the different inconsistencies then the result of analysis is a system model annotated with attributes operations and association so that will be the result of analysis and the system model can be described in terms of structure and its dynamic interoperation so that is what we do with the analysis so here the analysis model will have say three different models one is the functional model that will represent the use cases and the scenarios which will define the functionality of the system and then we have the analysis object model that will represent the class and object diagrams so we'll have to identify the classes and objects and then next is the dynamic model that is represented by the state machine and sequence diagram so these are the three models of the analysis then let us go to the system design so during the system design developers define the design goals of the project and decompose the system into smaller subsystems that can be realized by individual teams so we can give the subsystems to different teams for working on that so developers also select strategies for building the system such as the hardware or software platform on which the system will run so that is very important so as per that we have to do the design so the persistent data management strategy then the global control flow the access control policy and the handling of boundary conditions so all these strategies that are developed here then the result of system design is nothing but clear description of each of the strategies then a subsystem decomposition that means decomposition of the system into subsystem and a deployment diagram representing the hardware software mapping of the system then next is here we have gone for the analysis and the system design so both they produce the models of the system which we are developing but only analysis deals with the entities that the client can understand whereas the system design deals with much more refined model so that will include many entities that are beyond the comprehension or interest of the client so they are only understood by the developers then next is object design during object design developers define solution domain objects to bridge the gap between the analysis model and the hardware software platform defined during the system design so here we are having the solution domain objects then this includes precisely describing the object and subsystem interfaces selecting of the shape components restructuring the object model to attain design goals such as extensibility and 
understandability and optimizing the object model for performance so this is the role of the object design and the result of object design activity is a detailed object model annotated with constraints and precise description for each element the next is implementation so during implementation developers translate the solution domain model into the source code so here we can make use of the object oriented programming languages such as c++ java or python for the implementation so this includes implementing the attributes and the methods of each object and integrating all objects such that they function as a single system so we'll write different classes and different functions so that will implement all the attributes of the objects and then we'll integrate the objects so that they function as a single system then the implementation activity spans the gap between the detailed object design model and the complete set of source code files that can be compiled so at the end we'll have all the source code files then next is testing during testing developers find differences between the system and its model by executing the system or part of it with sample input data sets so we make use of sample input data sets for testing the system so during unit testing developers compare the object design model with each object and subsystem during integration testing combinations of such systems are integrated together and compared with the system design model so this will be done in different combinations then during the system testing typical exception cases are run through the system and compared with the requirements model so here we are interested in complete test of the system then the goal of testing is to discover as many faults as possible such that they can be repaired before delivery of the system so that is the main purpose of testing then the planning of the test phases occur in parallel to other development activities so for example here the system tests are planned during the requirement elicitation and analysis then integration tests they are planned during the system design and the unit tests they are planned during the object design so in this way the planning will be done then next is software life cycle activities and models for object oriented software engineering so here already we have discussed the phases of development requirements then analysis system and object design then implementation and testing now we are trying to model this with the help of use case model the use case model is expressed in terms of application domain objects in the requirement model or domain object model then the use case model is used for structuring the subsystems in the analysis model and then the use case model is realized by solution domain objects in the design model and then we have the implementation model which implements the source code and last we have the testing model here the use case model is verified by test cases in the testing model so in this way the models are developed then next we'll just see the summary of models of objectory or oos now first is the use case model so it defines the actors and the use cases so actors are outside and use cases are inside the system then next is domain object model so here the object of the real world are mapped into the domain object model because this system is used for modeling the real time large systems so we have to map the real world models then next is analysis or design solution object model so here we are presenting how the source code should be carried out and written that is the structure and subsystem are used for that 
then we have the implementation model the implementation model represent the implementation of the system by the source code and lastly we have the test model it constitutes the test plan specification and reports for testing then let us come to the conclusion the system development method based on OOAC or objectory is discipline process for industrialized development of software based on use case driven design so here we are mainly focusing on the use case and it is an approach of object oriented analysis and design that centers on understanding the ways in which a system actually is used so this is done with the help of use cases then by organizing the analysis and design models around a sequence of user interaction and actual usage scenarios the method produces systems that are both usable and more robust adopting more easily to changing usage so with the help of this we can just make some changes in the system they are easily done so this jacobson and others objectory has been developed and embodied in the computer aided software engineering tool system so it is recognized as a case tool so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any questions you can contact me on facebook twitter gmail and instagram then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel ullas kumar gokhale for learning then don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for future videos on this subject then thanks for watching have a nice day